Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. This is going to be the first of two videos that cover an example of a rod leaning on a wall. In this video, we're going to be looking at the kinematics and deriving some equations that we need to solve the kinetics part of it. So we're not dealing with any forces in this video. We're only looking at how this rod moves. So I'm going to start off by drawing the rod. And this is going to be given an angle with the floor, which we're going to call theta. Now, in order to analyze this, I need to give various points on this some names. So I'm going to name the top point A, and I'm going to name the bottom point B, and then the center point, the center of mass, is very important for the kinetics part. So I'm going to call that point C. Now, I'm also going to name the velocities of each of these points. B is constrained to move along the floor, so we know that all of the velocity and acceleration is going to be in the x direction. So I can write the velocity of B pointing directly to the right along with the acceleration of B. Similarly, I can write the velocity of A pointing directly downward along with the acceleration of A. Now, we don't know exactly how C is going to move, so we need to give it both an x velocity and a y velocity. And since this is the point that I'm really interested in, I'm going to just call this vx and vy and leave off the c. And we can also have accelerations. The last thing we're going to do is give this an angular velocity and acceleration, which I've defined positive counterclockwise. Now that this is fully defined, let's go ahead and use the equations that we found in previous videos. So the general form of that equation is that the velocity of b with respect to some fixed point o is equal to the velocity of a with respect to that point o plus the velocity of b with respect to a. And then we also found that the velocity of b with respect to a is equal to omega cross r. So we can rewrite this again as the velocity of a with respect to o plus omega crossed with the position of b with respect to a. So what I would like to do is relate the velocity of this middle point C that I know we're going to care about when we get to forces to the velocities of A and B, which we can constrain to be exactly in the I and J direction. I'm going to write the velocity of A with respect to O is equal to the velocity of C with respect to O plus omega crossed with the position of A with respect to C. So if we look at our general equation, I've replaced A with C, and I've replaced B with A. So now what we need to do is to write this position of A with respect to C in our coordinate system. The coordinate system that we are using is I pointing to the right and J pointing upwards. So the position of A with respect to C is going to be positive in j and negative in i. And it's also going to be based on sines and cosines here. So let's assume that we have a length of our rod l. We're moving up half of that rod. So the radius here is going to be l over 2. And the direction that we're moving is negative in the i direction. And this is going to be a cosine of theta. But it's going to be positive sine theta in the j direction. So now let's go ahead and write this equation out. Our velocity in the a direction, we said, was negative va in the j. We wrote our velocity of the center of mass as the sum of the vx in the i direction and vy in the j direction. So this is vxi plus vyj. Omega is in the positive k direction as we have drawn it. So I can write this as omega k crossed with what we just wrote here. L over 2 times negative cosine theta in the i direction plus a positive sine theta in the j direction. Now I'm going to do the same thing for b. The first equation only changes by swapping out the a and b. To define the position of b with respect to c, we can actually just take a negative and multiply it by our a with respect to c. It's in the exact opposite direction and it's still L over 2 distance. And then finally, we can write it all out just as we did before. Now, VB is just a positive VB in the I direction. VC doesn't change. And the rest only changes with a negative sign.
So now we can evaluate these cross products and then split this into i and j equations. For the i, I don't have anything on the left-hand side, so I just write 0. And this is equal to vx. Ignore this vy. And then this omega k crossed with i is going to give us a j, whereas k crossed with j gives us a negative i. So we have a minus omega l over 2 times sine of theta. And I can do the same thing in the j direction. So now we have a negative VA, which is equal to VY. And up here, we only care about this first term, since K crossed into I is a positive J. But we still have the negative here out in front of the cosine. So we end up with negative omega L over 2 times the cosine theta that was in front of the I. Now we can do the same thing for B. So again, we're going to look at I only, we end up with VB on the left hand side, and this is equal to VX. K crossed into J is negative I, so we have that negative and then the negative in front of the sign to end up with a positive omega L over 2 multiplied by sine theta. And then for J, we don't have anything on the left hand side, and all we need to worry about is VY, and K crossed into I is a positive J. So we have plus omega L over 2 times cosine theta. Now we can use these equations to find the velocity of A and B once we know Vx, but the simplest equations are going to be the most useful for us here. So if we need to know the velocity of the center of mass, we can relate that to omega and theta quite readily. All right, so our next equation is the same thing, but with accelerations. We wrote that previously as a of b with respect to o is equal to a of a with respect to o plus alpha crossed with the position of b with respect to a minus omega squared times the position of b with respect to a. So our first equation is going to relate a to c just as we did with our velocities above. So the acceleration of a with respect to O is equal to the acceleration of C with respect to O plus this alpha term crossed with position of A with respect to C minus omega squared and again A with respect to C. Now we can reuse the positions that we found earlier. So all we need to do at this point is just plug everything in and jug away. So we can write this as the acceleration of A in the J direction, and this needs a negative, is equal to both the x and y components of the acceleration of the center of mass. And then instead of omega, we're going to write alpha in the k direction crossed with our position vector. So this is L over 2 times negative cosine of theta in the i plus sine of theta in the j. And then we subtract off the omega squared multiplied by the same thing. Now we know from before that we really only care about the i part of this equation because we don't want to have to deal with the acceleration in a. So I'm going to write just the i part, which is going to be 0 on the left-hand side, equal to ax, and we end up with k crossed into j, which is negative i, so minus alpha l over 2 sine theta. And then we have minus a negative cosine theta. So this becomes plus omega squared times L over 2 times cosine of theta. So now let's do the same thing for B. Once again, the original equation doesn't change much. All we need to do is substitute out A for B. Now this becomes the acceleration of B, which is in the I direction. Acceleration of C doesn't change. Then we have this alpha term crossed into this radius, which only changes sign. And then finally, this last term, again, the radius only changes sign. Now, for this equation, all we really want is the j equation, just like we had above. So I'll take the j of this second equation, which gives us that 0 is equal to the acceleration of y. k crossed into i is positive j, so we have plus alpha L over 2 times cosine of theta. And then we have another positive because the negative here cancels out with the negative here. So we have plus 
omega squared L over two times sine of theta. So when we move to the kinetics, these are the two equations that we're gonna be interested in. And what they do is relate the linear accelerations to the angular accelerations. 